welcome to this set of videos that I have entitled Music Theory as Taught by Bach. Now, I use that title because it helps to put us into a context, but this video series is not just about the music of Bach. It is about music as it was written in what has become known as the Common Practice Era. This era starts around 1600 and stretches to around 1900. And what we mean by common practice is that while there was a whole variety of styles of music written during this time period, if, for example you have the Baroque, the Classical and the Romantic eras contained within this time span, even though the style on the surface changed, the underpinning guidelines, the underpinning thought processes behind the music were common to all of the music written in the Western art tradition between about 1600 and 1900. Now as I've hinted there, there are many other traditions of writing music that were, do not follow the common practice, either other countries, other uh, traditions outside of Western art music, or even some of the folk traditions, for example, within the Western countries, uh, they would have used their own systems. We're looking at very specifically Western art music in this time period. What, we, what you may also have heard me say is that there are guidelines that, are, that lie behind the writing of this music in this common practice era. And I use that word guidelines very specifically. I don't particularly like the word rules. You will often hear the rules of music theory. Here are the rules. And they're not really rules. They are guidelines in that by general common assent, by common practice, most of the Western composers, the Western art composers, were following the same set of basic guidelines when writing their music in this time period. And that's what we're going to get into. We're going to get into what are the guidelines and how can they be then interpreted and, and used to create music that fits into this time frame, that fits into the music written, that sounds like the music written in this time frame. And we are really putting ourselves in a box in the common practice time period box of writing music that sounds like and is informed by the practices and the guidelines for this time period. Now what does that mean? It means that over the course of these videos the information you get is going to be cumulative. You are going to learn stuff in the first videos that is then going to have to be understood and added to the information in the second video and the third video and the fourth video so that by the end of the series of videos you really understand the common practice practices very well but you won't necessarily understand them at any given point or certainly not at the beginning where you will be lacking the complete picture that means that at times at the beginning you may have to accept the type of information being given you will understand it will make sense in and of itself but the context in which you apply that information may not be complete until you've watched three, four, five videos together and you've taken all that information into account and then apply it to create some music that sounds like the music that you, you would have created in the common practice era. So the first thing is, is to stick with it, not to necessarily expect you'll understand everything in the first video, but to realize that the information is cumulative over time. The second thing is to remember that as I share with you the guidelines, there are going to be some things I'm going to say generally to make your music sound like common practice music, you will avoid doing these things. And to make your music sound like common practice music, you will do these things. You will follow these guidelines. Those two things are going to be kind of the backbone, if you will, of understanding this time period. And as we move forward, unpacking those things, understanding what we don't do and understanding what the guidelines tell us we should do, you will find that I will introduce, say, initially an idea or a concept, and then you will have to take that into account along with additional information from subsequent videos and bring all of the guidelines and all of the principles and all of the ideas for writing music together to be able to create music that works in this time period and in this style period. So as you're doing that, don't get frustrated if initially it seems like I'm, I'm giving you a lot of guidelines or a lot of way of looking at things or you have to somehow 
uh, juggle a lot of different ideas. There is a certain amount to, and a certain aspect of this where you have to indeed take a number of different ideas and concepts and you have to bring them to bear together and depending on the context of the specific chord progression that you're dealing with you will then apply those guidelines in different ways to create music that sounds like it's from the common practice era. So you will have to uh, live with the fact that you will have a lot of guidelines to be thinking about, a lot of general practices to be aware of, and you will pull upon those guidelines and apply them in different ways, at different times, in different contexts, to create the music that is required to be music that is fitting with the common practice uh, era. So, I will provide you with those guidelines through this video series and through handouts and you should keep those guidelines with you and as you're working on the uh, various exercises we'll do in class and that you'll do for homework, keep those sheets next to you and refer to them and learn over time how, what guidelines you need to bring to bear at what times in order to be able to create the music in the style that we're, we're working on this semester. Is this the only style in music? No, of course not. Are we purposefully putting ourselves into a box to understand one style of music? Yes, we are. And we do it with this particular common practice style because it underpins so much of the other music that we then later study in 20th century music or in rock or pop or in jazz music. And it is the culmination of much of the music you'll study in eras prior to this, such as the Renaissance or, or uh, the medieval period. So bear with me when I say that while we're going to spend a lot of time dealing with this era, we do generally understand this is not the only way to write music. And we are purposefully putting ourselves into a box to understand this particular era at this time. I hope you'll enjoy working on this. I hope these videos will be informative and helpful and that you will bring questions from these videos to class so that we can answer your questions and help you to become fully aware of and fully confident in your expression of, expressions of your music in this style period. Thank you.